So I got a woodworking project coming up where I need to make a perfectly rectangular box. And for that, I wanted some brackets to hold it in place to make it easier to build. Well, rather than go out and buy some, I decided to just print my own on my DaVinci Junior. And here's a sample of it. I'll show you how I made these on today's Filament Friday. So I moved my DaVinci Junior over here to where my power tools and wood tools are because I'm using it more and more in my wood shop section of my personal makerspace here. And because you're limited to what filament you can use, I'm just, I'm just not going to do anything special with it. So it's perfect for this type of project. And you can buy clamps like this, I know from like rockler.com, and maybe they're better than what I'm going to produce. But to me, the fun part is actually producing your own tools. And once you've made it on a 3D printer, you can make more if you ever break one, or you can make more as gifts for friends. And then I can share the files so if anybody likes what I did, they can do it. So 3D printing in the workshop is probably not what most woodworkers would expect to have. But having said that, I think this worked out really good. And it all started by designing it in Tinkercad. So let me show you the steps from Tinkercad until I built it. So here, let me show you. Here's the brackets completed in Tinkercad. I'll just move these out of the way because I'm going to make new ones. And first thing I did was make the bed 150 by 150, which is the size of the uh, Da Vinci Junior. Then I just brought a block in and I made it 100 millimeters long. Then I brought in a triangle, turned it 90 degrees, and then moved it, uh, actually I made it just slightly taller at 22 millimeters versus 20 the block is. So it sticks out of the top and the bottom just a little bit. And then I made it into a hole. And then all I had to do was duplicate that, slide the new one over, and then group uh, those two together and then duplicate both of them, and then rotate that 180 degrees, and I had my triangles to take away some of the plastic and, you know, save some plastic but still give me strength. Now once I had this all together, I grouped it together and made another one. I uh, duplicated it. And then once I duplicated it, then I could turn it, um, I actually had to mirror this thing. So I turned it 90 degrees and then I mirrored it, and then brought them together in the corner, and now I have my 90 degree bracket. So once I grouped them together I duplicated that but now I needed to make this one shorter so I went back and I ungrouped them so I could remove one of the triangles and then I shortened the arms to 80 millimeters instead of 100 and this way it kind of fit right inside the previous one. So group that back together and now I got my two brackets. But I needed more support in the center and this is where the clamp will go to hold these two together. So turn the triangle on its side and I needed this to be 30 millimeters wide because that's the width of the clamp, the, the foot of the clamp. So I turned it 45 degrees, brought it into the center of the, the bracket and I actually I need to lift this up a little bit here, it's too low. So I'm gonna make it zero from the bed and then position it so it's centered and there I have it. I have the corner of the bracket. So now I'm going to use that to just duplicate it and use it to make a flat edge on the corners. So I'll make one there and then make it on the other bracket. And then once I've got this position kind of centered where I want it, then I make these two into holes. And then now I can just kind of group, well i got to turn it here a little bit. I can group all these together to make one bracket and I group these other two to make the second bracket. And basically that's it. I've got the brackets ready to go, position them on the bed. So now I just need to export this as a .stl file and send it to XYZWare. So here's the brackets in XYZWare, and these are the original. They're, they're not the ones I just made. So they're a little bit different spacing for the triangles, but I did a 25% fill, a 0.3 layer height, thick shells, and a fast speed. Auto repair was checked, but no supports. And then it sliced and everything looked good. It said 4 hours and 22 minutes and 22 meters of plastic. So I didn't time lapse them, but here they are completed on a Da Vinci Junior. And here they are off the bed. And they turned out really good. They look really smooth and perfectly square. So let me show you how this works. 
I got two pieces of scrap wood that I cut a 45 degree angle on my miter saw. And despite all the adjustments on my miter saw, it always seems like there's a little something preventing these guys from being perfectly square. That's why I like to put a 90 degree bracket in here of some kind. So what I do is I position it like this. Bring in a clamp so it clamps to one side of the board. And bring a clamp on the other side. And now I got a pretty square joint. But because it's only two clamping points and nothing in the center here, while I'm screwing, this thing can actually move a little bit. And that's what I don't like. So what I'd like is another piece in here to hold this point together. I don't want it to drive these two together because this will become a wedge like pushing these guys apart, which I don't want. So that's where I made this other piece. And this is what I didn't see with the Rockler um, version. I wanted a piece here to close this gap out here and also be a 90 degree. And I designed the inner one to accept the clamp right there. So then I just slide this guy in and I don't want to tighten this too tight. And let me show you as hopefully you can see this. As I pull this in, it pulls those guys together. The gap is all pulled together tight. I have a nice flush surface. And best of all, I have a perfectly square corner. And so now I have room on, on the sides of this to shoot a screw in here and in here. And if I position this more centered, I could get up here and into here. So they're not too thick that they block me from screwing in the wood, but they're thick enough to hold the boards right where I want them, nice and flush and perfectly square. So it worked out really good. So I really like the way this turned out, and I think these are going to be very handy for a lot of projects in the future, and especially the one they were designed for. Now I do need a lot of clamps. I need three at each corner, but these clamps, these are real nice ones, but I've got some cheap ones that I got at Harbor Freight. So you don't have to use good ones at each corner. Um, this one here that pulls the two together, hardly any pressure on it. So a, a cheap Harbor Freight clamp would work fine. So I think it's going to work out really good. Another thing I discovered is there's times where I'm working on a piece of wood and I, I don't want it tipping over. Well, of course, I could put it in my vise at the end, but sometimes I want to work right on my workbench. These come in very handy to support it. I just clamp it and now it's straight and it's 90 degrees to the bench. Now, I printed these at 50% fill because I wanted them super strong. And then I went back and I printed some at 25% fill once I got some black plastic in. And I think these are going to be plenty strong enough as well. They're pretty solid. So you can definitely get away with the 25% that I showed in the, in the settings. But 50%, very, very solid. It just took twice as long to print. These only took about three and a half hours only. These took like seven and a half to eight hours to print. So basically what I would do is put a set in the start a print at night. Next morning I had a full set and then I'd start another one, get through the day, start another one at night. So within a 24 hour period, a truly about a 24 hour period, I have my four sets. So if you like this, give it a thumbs up. That tells me that you like this type of project and you want to see more. And if you do want to see more, simply subscribe. That way my videos will come up and it's every Friday, Filament Friday, I'm trying to do a project like this. And if you want to help support the channel financially, a dollar to the link up here in my Patreon account, it goes a long way. I've got a lot of great Patreon supporters and we seem to grow every, every month. So it's allowing me to do things and a lot more that's coming up. So that's it for now. I'll see you next time.